Hi everyone and welcome back to Lesson 2 of Spreadsheets for Business. In Level 1, we'll cover the usage of round, round up, round down functions, as well as we'll start out on our exploration of the paste special functionality. We start this lesson with the case scenario where the zone is a company that manufactures the TZ Blazer line of snowboards and they have suddenly had a large increase in the demand for their products. Before they ramp up their production, however, they want to do an analysis to make sure that the quality doesn't go down as they increase the number of boards they hope to produce. So what we have here is a spreadsheet with the last seven days of boards produced. During this week we produced 29 boards and for each of these we have the size, style, date manufactured, which production line it came off of, the friction coefficient, and the torsion strength. One of the main points of this chapter is to study statistical analysis tools built into Excel. What we're going to do with this data is to take the mean, the median, the mode, and the standard deviation of the data, in particular the friction coefficient and the torsion strength columns, to help us to make some informed decisions on how to best conduct our business. We're going to calculate these various statistical analyses on this data and compare it to the available historical data to make sure there hasn't been a drop in our quality. Before we do that, we're going to introduce a couple of new things to you. The first topic is rounding. If you look at this torsion strength column of data here, most of the data is accurate to two digits. Not all of it, however. These cells down here have several more decimal places of precision. In order to be the most accurate, we need to make all of the decimal precisions the same on all of the values in this column. To do this, we need to round all of the values in this column so that the cells are just two decimal places. What most folks originally consider doing is to change the format of the data to just show two decimal places. We could do that by clicking on these icons here to increase or decrease the number of decimal places displayed. You could also right click on the data and then select format data, then clicking on number, and then changing the decimal places here and clicking on the OK button. Now all of this data looks like they contain two decimal places, but does it? I don't think so. Look at row 24 again and observe the actual number in this cell here in the formula bar and it's still 2.00001. It has just been formatted to show us two decimal places. Any analysis on this data the way it is would be statistically inaccurate because you'd be comparing some values with two decimal places to some with four decimal places. Since this is slightly inaccurate, let's now show you the right way to do this. Let me undo this mistake by hitting the Control Z a few times. What we really need to do is to round all of these values down to two decimal places so that all of the data has the same number of significant digits to the right of the decimal place. For instance, this cell 1.7345 needs to be rounded to 1.73 and all of these other digits get discarded. If it were 1.735, then it would be rounded to 1.74. The way we do this is with a very flexible function called round. Let me go over to this cell and start our formula with equals round and then we put in a number 0.5 in here followed by a comma and set the next value to 0 and the 0.5 will be rounded up to 1 when we hit enter. If we were to change this to a 0.4 and then hit enter Notice that it will be rounded down to zero. Let me take a second to show you what Microsoft calls IntelliSense. If you look at how the formula shows you hints and then makes certain hints bold, Excel is trying to tell you what it's expecting you to put into it. Notice that after you type in the equals round and then a left parentheses, it's now telling you that it needs two things commonly called parameters. It's telling us that the round formula is expecting a number and a number of digits parameter that it crudely calls num digits. 
Note how these parameters are always separated by commas. See how the number is bold? That's an indicator of where you are in the formula currently and hopefully gives you enough of a clue here that you need to put in a number or a cell reference that contains a number in here. If we put in a .5 here and then a comma, inserting the comma tells Excel that you're now ready to move on to the next or the second parameter. See how the num digits hint is now bold? If we want this number rounded to the nearest whole number, or in this case an integer, we would put in a zero. If we want things rounded to one decimal place, we put a one in here. Two decimal places, we put a two, etc. Please note that you can also round to tens, one hundreds, etc. by putting in a negative number here. For instance, if you want to round the number 1050, to the nearest 100, you could put in the 1050 here and change the num digits parameter to a negative 2 and hit enter. See that this formula correctly calculates out to 1100? If we change that number parameter to 1049 and hit enter, now that formula rounds down the value to 1000. Let me start over in this cell by hitting equals and then start typing round. Notice that Excel displays for us all the formulas that start with the same letters that we type in. You'll see here that we have two other useful formulas by the names of round up and round down. If you want a number to always round up then use the round up function. Guess what round down does? Spoiler alert, it rounds down. So if we put in left parentheses and 0.999 comma 0, the normal round function would round this to the nearest integer of 1, but since the round down formula always rounds down, yep, we get 0. Getting back to our case here, what we need to do is to round all of this data to two significant digits or decimal places. If we start typing our round formula in G3, equals, round, left parentheses, uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. If we need to round the value of this cell, we can't just type our formula into this cell because it wipes out our actual data that we want to round in the first place. The way we handle this is to temporarily put the function into the same row a column or two over here to the right. So go here, equals, round, left parentheses, then select the cell containing the number that we want rounded. We follow this with a comma and then a two for the num digits parameter. Write parentheses and then enter. We now have the correct value here. If we drag this down, grab hold of the fill handle here and drag down a ways to check it out, we see that all these cells round to a consistent number of significant digits now. Let me undo this last bit of work to show you another shortcut. Control Z and go back up here to the top. Making the fill handle appear is a cool thing and dragging it down is even cooler. But what if we had 10,000 rows of data? We only have 29 rows here so it's not a big deal to drag down to the end but if you're working on a huge, large, deep data set, life's too short to just drag it down for 10 minutes. So for that, if we just double click on the fill handle once it's visible, Excel invokes a wizard to automatically fill the formula down to the last row of data it thinks is appropriate. Now that's truly awesome. The next thing we want to do is to take this data and replace the existing torsion strength data with the newly generated data from our round formula. How do we do that, you ask? One way is to copy the data from our round functions by selecting it and then hitting Control C, C for copy. Then select the cells where I want them to go, the previous data here in column G. If I paste the copied cells as they were, then all I'm going to do is copy all other round functions into these new cells, which will just give me garbage. 
We just want the values generated by all these round functions, but not the functions themselves from these cells. Let me undo this, control Z. So instead of doing a regular paste, or control V is the shortcut for that, I'm going to do what a special kind of paste that Excel calls paste special. If you go to the home ribbon, if you aren't there already, and go up to the paste drop down arrow to see all kinds of choices. I'm going to go to the list of all these choices here in the paste special area. From here we can just paste the formulas, the values, the formats, etc. We'll use the majority of these other items in the course, but for now, trust me that they are cool and useful. What we want for this case is to just paste the rounded off values so we click on the radio button here by values and hit OK. Notice this value down here is now just 2. It's not 2.00001 anymore. Now that we're done with this round column, we can just select it, right click on it, and then select delete in order to do away with it forever. Now everything is precise and consistent up to two decimal places, but we still have a bit of formatting issue here in these cells that rounded to fewer than two decimal places. We don't want to change the data since it's all correct now. I just want to change how it's displayed. Let me click on the top cell, this 2.21 here, and format it as a number with two decimal places and then hit OK. Now that we have this cell formatted how we like it, we can click on this little paintbrush here on the home ribbon and our mouse changes to this little paintbrush and that means that whatever cell or range of cells that we select next will be painted with that exact same format. So now I'm going to click and drag over this entire column worth of data and release the mouse. Now all the data in this torsion strength column are both mathematically correct and consistent. We're now ready to go on to the next step in the next video.